first and foremost, we can measure C15 levels. And so that's always been around. Now doctors can actually care about what the levels say. So we know that we need about 0.2% of all fatty acids in our blood. Greater than that is what we need to not be deficient, which is great. And those tests are now readily available. So we can start with, do we have the right levels in our blood? And then with regard to what we care about, Important markers, like I'd mentioned, ferritin. Um, ferritin is a measurement of how much iron is, to, is present in our tissues. And that level will go up if you're developing um, iron uh, overload. And that is an insidious process where it just keeps adding, keeps adding, and keeps adding over decades. But you will see those ferritin levels go up. The dolphins had extraordinarily high ferritin levels, and that was a big tip for us. Um, the other measurements um, that will likely come into the panel are things like lipid peroxidation, that if we can, understanding that this uh, method of phoroptosis is happening, be able to measure lipid peroxidation. But then as it gets more into the disease state, you're going to start seeing um, lowered hemoglobin um, with regard to red blood cell indices, um, where it shows evidence that there's more, there's this biomarker called RDW which is incredibly powerful in being able to recognize if you have a high RDW, red blood cell distribution width, this is suggestive of um, being part of this syndrome. So it's more like, it's one of those things where, you know, when a doctor has, if you have five out of seven of these on your routine test results, you may have C15 deficiency, but of course, getting the C15 levels is, is a pretty, pretty sure shot. All right. So we have a test so we can check our blood. The number you mentioned there is 0.2. That's the threshold we want to at least make sure we're at to keep ourselves healthy. Is it different for humans and dolphins or is it pretty similar? It's pr remarkably, it was pretty similar. Uh, you know, it, it, we have uh, different relative amounts of some types of fatty acids in our cell membranes, but it was pretty amazing, Jesse, going back to when we were finding all this out in humans and we were understanding the threshold values, when we went back to the dolphins, it was the same. And so spe specifically to the red blood cells that we really do need that percentage of infrastructure in our cell membrane to keep them from becoming fragile. And red blood cells are such a great cell to look at that's representing our whole body because we can very easily, red blood cells are very easy um, tests for doctors to be able to say all kinds of things about them. Are they more fragile? Do you have enough? Um, in which way are they fragile? So it's, it's a very powerful index of um, how, we're, how we're doing. Okay, coming back to the point two, that's the threshold. If that's good, what is the upper limit that we consider great or thriving? Uh, really good question. Uh, so there are some hints that more is better. Uh, there it started in 2005 with um, AJ Holbert. And so he came out with a theory of called the cell membrane pacemaker theory of aging. And Holbert didn't focus on C15, but what he did show was that he looked at a bunch of different mammals and he wanted to answer the question of could cell membrane um, strength dictate the longevity of a mammalian species? And so he, in fact, showed that. He showed the more fragile the fatty acids in a cell membrane, the shorter the, that mammal lived. So it actually explained how a human and a dolphin and an elephant lives longer than a mouse. So that gets us back to your question, which is we, our question is, okay, can we push that evolutionary trick uh, even further? And to say, if we can increase the C15 levels in our cell membranes, which we know makes our cells stronger, can that actually help an individual extend their longevity? Um, and so data to date support that that answer is yes, um, in part because uh, it is slowing the onset of chronic disease, of chronic diseases. So that alone will help us live longer, if, as long as you believe that, I, which I believe if I can not get type 2 diabetes and heart disease and fatty liver disease, then I'm going to live longer. Um, there's a hint in Sardinia, and I know the blue zones are undergoing uh, some scrutiny these days, but it will they will survive uh, for sure <laughs> from, from uh, what I've been seeing on the back end um, here in the science world. 
that um, if you go to a place like Sardinia, where uh, people uh, live longer and just look within that population, they have C15 levels, which are two to three times higher than us, um, like uh, here in the in the United States. So in the U.S., the average person has we're right at that edge of 0.2 percent of C15. In Sardinia, even older people, knowing that our C15 levels decline as we age, older people we're talking people in their 70s, 80s, 90s, um, and 100, they have 0.4 to 0.6 percent of C15 in there. So you're double to triple amount higher, which matches. Big studies from Harvard um, and other folks showing that that once you reach that 0.4 to 0.6 level, you have the lowest risk of developing heart disease. Interestingly, in Sardinia, they have a very a relatively low risk, lower risk of heart disease compared to the rest of the world. So that is a long-winded way of getting to your answer, which is that yeah, that that there is support that by getting to this 0.4 to 0.6 percent of C15 that we can extend our longevity, um, which is uh, relatively easy to do. What's the highest number you've seen tested? Um, I have to say, I think I'm the second highest uh, of results that we've seen. The, the, we have a test, um, we partnered with Genova Diagnostics for an at-home um, test for C15. And so um, when we have seen results, uh, from that test, it's this. It's been around this like 0.6 percent uh, is is the highest that we've seen thus far. So, not that we're gamifying it. <laughs> and where do you typically hover around? So I'm at this. Um, so point six, I should say point six is the is the highest that's been reported. Period. I shouldn't say but via this test. I have a 0.46 percent, and the next highest was like a 0.52. Okay. And how much of that would you associate to the way you eat versus supplementing? Yes, Obviously, as a creator, Fatty 15, are you just keeping a bottle of that with you all day and popping <laughs> one every few hours? Or I'm just curious how much diet versus supplementation weighs into that number. Yeah. And obviously, you can only guess, but. Right. So, and no, no, I, I, and I agree. And this makes a really good point, which is the reason why we developed fatty 15 and, you know, a pure C15 supplement just was, was to help truly be a supplement. Like let's help be part of the solution. There are a lot of solutions here. The way that I'm getting to these like longevity levels, I don't shy away from whole dairy fat and specifically I'm just a cheese lover. So um, Sardinians also eat, have cheese that is uh, particularly high in C15, um, in part because they're from sheep and goats that graze on mountainous grass. And all those combinations have shown that grass eating ruminants uh, at high altitudes produce the highest C15 <laughs> uh, in products there are. So they have this added benefit. So I do eat, um, have um, cheese, and, um, cheese as a snack every day. That for sure helps boost my C15 levels along with uh, the supplementation. Um, so that I think this is the combination of those two that uh, gets me at this uh, good targeted C15 level. If you enjoyed that clip, you're going to want to head over here and catch a full episode. I'll see you over there. One of the most important things that C15 does is it serves as an armor that helps to stabilize our cell membranes. Really important because it prevents them from breaking down, which is a primary cause of aging.